What is up, meal prepping family? It's Bobby, and a lot of you guys have been asking me for some keto meal prepping. So today I'm gonna hook you up with a low carb comfort food meal prepping that is like a hug in a bowl, and you're gonna freaking love it. So I hope you're ready for chicken pot pie. Oven roasted bone in chicken thighs pulled and tossed in a creamy vegetable sauce and topped with a low carb cheddar biscuit. So listen, if you love straight up delicious meal prepping that is huge on flavor, click that subscribe button, yo. I'm rocking new videos every Friday morning and I want you to join the Flav City community. All right, to get this recipe rocking, I'm gonna grab my boatload of veggies here. I have cremini mushrooms, celery, onions, and carrots. I'm preheating the largest pot I have in my kitchen over medium heat. I'm gonna drizzle in a couple teaspoons of olive oil and then go in with the veggies. That is a redonkadonk donk amount of veggies, but they will cook down after 12 or 15 minutes to help them wilt down and release their water. I'm gonna pinch in a good half a teaspoon of salt and a few grinds of black pepper. Before I forget, let's also grab some dry thyme and shake in about a half a teaspoon. I right, give that a good mix up. All right, now there are few things in life that are finer than oven roasted bone on chicken thighs. In particular, crispy chicken skin. I roasted these in the oven for one hour. And this, you guys, is like a potato chip, but a million times better than a potato chip. It's fatty, it's delicious. And if you don't like it, put it in the mail and send it to me. To make the chicken like this, you take bone on, skin on chicken thighs, season them with salt and pepper, pop them in a 400 degree oven for one hour exactly, Take them out and they look like this. I'm gonna peel off all the skin on these guys. All right, I'm gonna transfer these to a clean cutting board, save the skin for later. Oh, the hold on. This is the money piece. I ain't saving this for later, listen. Insane, dude. All right, now it's time to grab two forks and go all Wolverine on these chicken thighs and just shred them up like crazy. And make sure you get all the chicken off the bone. Don't leave any of it behind. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I wanna grab my knife and chop it up really nice and fine. And if you're looking for a killer lunch meal prep, I use this exact same preparation on chicken thighs to make my curried chicken salad with raisins and walnuts. It's the bomb. All right, gonna push this aside. The veg are cooking down really nicely. Now is the time I wanna grab three cloves of garlic that I finely minced and put those in there. Now, I forgot to say it last week with the uh, creamy mushroom chicken recipe, but I know there's people out there who don't like mushrooms. And if you don't like mushrooms, you can easily leave them out in this recipe and use uh, red bell peppers, zucchini, or yellow squash. Pretty much any non-starchy vegetable will be perfect for this recipe. All right, you guys, the vegetables have been cooking for a total of like 15 minutes and get inside that pot. Comfort food cannot be rushed. Look at how those mushrooms and the veggies have really wilted down and look at the bottom of the pot here. All those sticky bits on the bottom, the French call those fond. I call them delicious sticky bits. And when I add the chicken stock later on, all that flavor gets released back into the chicken pot pie. And that is why your patience most definitely gets rewarded. I'll take all of that chicken that I finally chopped and get it back in the pool. Now, Peas are not the most keto friendly ingredient. They are a little high in starch, but a pot pie is not a pot pie without green peas. So let's compromise and do a half a cup of these guys. Keep them frozen. Don't even bother thawing them and get them in the pot. Plus Desi loves peas, so it'd be a criminal act not to add them. All right, now let's grab our liquid in the form of a low sodium chicken broth. Always use low sodium because you want to control the amount of salt in your dish. Exactly. Thank you, Desi. And I'm sure a few of you guys said it too. Let's go with a cup of that. All right. Give this a good stir up. A lot of people forget to check for seasoning along the way of the cooking process. And if this is not seasoned now, it's not going to be seasoned later on. So now is the time I want to go in here and grab a little snack. Mmm. Already, it's comforting, dude. It's like a big, gigantic culinary hug. But... It does need salt. I'm gonna pinch in a good quarter teaspoon now, and why not crack in a little more black pepper. All right, one last stir. I'm gonna let this bubble away for maybe 10 minutes, which is just enough time for us to get our low carb, cheesy Southern black pepper biscuits cracking. Now I have a recipe for black pepper biscuits that are the bomb, but they're also a carb bomb. So to get them keto friendly, I'm replacing starchy flour with two cups of almond flour that I finely sifted to make it nice and airy. 
To that, I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and half a teaspoon of onion powder. And then to make them black pepper, I'm gonna grind in a few cracks. All right, now mix up the dry batter. I've also seen this recipe done with coconut flour. It's pretty easy also, and there's a ton of recipes on Google. So just look that up. All right, dry batter is done. It's time to get going on the wet batter, which is really easy. All you have to do is crack two eggs into the bowl here. Give it a good whisk. Now for the fat, you can use butter, you can use lard like grandma used to do it, or you can use coconut oil. I love this stuff. I'm gonna add a half a cup of melted in here. All right, give that one last whisk up. And then when you're baking, you always add the wet team on top of the dry team. So go ahead and pour that in. And then go ahead and fold everything together. The almond flour is really dry, so it soaks up the fat and the eggs really quickly. All right, now is the time you wanna grab your cheddar cheese. I have half a cup of shredded cheddar right here. Go ahead and add that to the dough and just mix it in. By the way, this recipe is 100% gluten-free and it's been dairy-free up until this point, but if you wanna use vegan cheddar cheese, go ahead. There's actually a really good amount of brands out there right now, and you can use any kind of vegan shredded cheddar cheese you want. All right, my oven is preheating at 350 degrees. I have a baking sheet with some parchment paper down here to make uniform little biscuits. I'm gonna use a cookie scoop. You can obviously use a spoon, so just go in there and set it right down on the parchment. All right, that made 15 cute little soldiers, and because I want them to look more like biscuits and not cookies, I'm just gonna use my fingers here and flatten them down a little bit. Okay, I do realize there might be some Southern grandmas who are rolling over in their grave right now, but listen, grandma didn't give a fuck about being keto or low carb, but if she did, trust me, she would put her stamp of approval on these biscuits and give me a bottle of moonshine to wash them down with. All right, let me finish patting these guys out here. All right, now I do wanna finish these the same way I finished my black pepper biscuits. Just crack over a little bit of black pepper on top. All right, pop these guys in a 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes until golden brown. All right, let's get back to the chicken pot pie. Take a peek in the pot here. Nice. Everything is really coming together and melding really well, but look, it's too loose. It's kind of like a soup. So now is the time I go to the thickening power of a cornstarch slurry. So in this container, I have two tablespoons of cornstarch. We could use water, but we already used chicken stock. And last time I checked, chicken stock has way more flavor than water. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons of that and go ahead and mix that up. And then go ahead and add half of this for now. You could always add more later on. And then a fun fact about cornstarch is that you don't activate its thickening power until you boil it. So I'll bring this to a boil and I could always add more if I need it. All right, you guys, now this is what you want the mixture to look like. Check that out. Everything is nice and creamy. The sauce is thickened up perfectly. I'm gonna kill the heat. The chicken pot pie mixture is done. I'm gonna plate these up in meal prep. Damn it. <laughs> Damn cat, got my tongue all day long, son. Plate these guys in meal prep containers and we'll wait for the biscuits to finish. <laughs> Oh my, can you guys smell these biscuits? No, I forget, you can't, but trust me, they smell awesome and they look awesome. Look at the flecks of the cheddar cheese all throughout there. Now normally I would take the biscuit batter, put it on top of the chicken mixture and bake that whole thing in the oven. But because these are paleo with almond flour, you can't do that, but who cares because they look legit. Now when it comes time to eat these bad boys, what I like to do is take a few of the biscuits and just place them on top. The recipe has enough for three biscuits per serving. And that way I can get a bite of everything together. Dude, drop the fork moment. That is seriously good comfort food. The fact that these are low carb almond meal biscuits with cheddar cheese is bananas. That whole thing is delicious. Keto friendly and bomb.com. When you make these, tag me on social media. I love, love, love seeing your creations. The recipe is down below in the description box along with the heating, storage, macros, all that good stuff. Share this video and subscribe, spread the love. If you wanna see two more epic meal preps, check out the ones below me. I'll see you next week. Until then, hashtag keep on cooking.